Merry Christmas! Welcome to the Snowburger Family Kitchen. My name is Angel Snowburger and I'm on the board for Chambersburg Community Theater. These are my daughters. Olivia and Lily. We just wanted to say happy holidays and invite you along with our cookie baking today in our next installment of Chambersburg Community Theater's um, holiday bake-along how-to videos. So we're going to be baking today one of our absolute favorite Christmas cookies. We call it a ginger doodle because it's half ginger snap. It has the spice and flavor of a ginger snap, but it's, uh, you know, warm and soft like a snickerdoodle. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Okay, let's go ahead and get started making our ginger doodle cookies. Okay. Olivia, can you please take this one and a half stick of softened butter and mm. drop it in the mixer? Try not to get my hands all buttery. Yeah, try not to get your hands too buttery. Yeah. Oh no, I ripped it. It's okay. <laughs> Here, I'll help you with the next one. Yeah. Get it. There you go. Aha! Okay. Next one. Alright, All right. and then Lily, you're going to add in this cup of brown sugar. I'm going to wash my hands. To the butter? Yeah, to the butter. butter. Like with so many other recipes, we're going to cream the butter and sugar together. We're going to do a wet, wet ingredient, dry ingredient kind of deal. Lily, shut the mixer, lock it. Locked. And turn her on. Alright, uh, two, two. Mm -hmm. So when you're creaming butter and sugar of any kind, it always takes longer than you expect it to, but you really want to keep going until all the granulated sugar is starting to dissolve and it looks nice and fluffy. So how about we'll come back when that's done? Mm. Okay, so the butter and the brown sugar are nice and creamed uh. together and fluffy. So we're gonna add in one egg. Ew, that's so disgusting. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna mix that together really well. Okay. And it's better if you have your egg room temperature because then you won't um, make the butter start to get cold again and get clumped up. Okay, that's that's good enough. Yeah. Oh. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget all the uh, crazy noises. Okay, so now we're going to add in a quarter cup of molasses. No, don't get that sticky all over the table because that will be super hard. Sticker, super sticky. One time I tried straight molasses. Don't do it. I told her not to. I told I'm, her just because it makes ginger doodle cookies taste good does not mean you want to eat it on its own. I've tried molasses and buttermilk. Both are very bad on their own. <laughs> <laughs> Mix these together. Okay. That sort of looks gross. Yeah, it sort of looks gross, but that's normal. Let's see the gross stuff. Okay, and you want to scrape down the sides every so often. So I'm going to do that so we get the molasses all mixed in. Mm, not sticking all over the sides. Yeah, sticking all over. Ah! Oh, no, no, no. What have you done? <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Just a quick little second here. Okay. So that's good enough for that. Okay. Now, in here... Uh, we have how much flour? We have two and a quarter cups of flour, and we're gonna add in <laughs> this bowl that has the baking soda, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and salt. Yeah. So go ahead and dump that in. Okay. Good. Okay. And then use the whisk to get that all mixed up. I can't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the recipe will be um, linked down below if I didn't already say this. We found this recipe um, online from a blogger. Her name is I Heart Nap Time. <laughs> I'm I guessing mean, she's a mommy blogger. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Nap time is yeah. a great time of the day. I also like silent reading time. That is also very good. That's time. also a beautiful time of the day. Yeah, thank you. Okay. okay. All right. So did you get that whisk together? Uh, you don't want any clumps of salt or baking soda. Yeah, that looks gross. Uh, yeah, it's you know, Pretty good. All, all right, okay. so now we're going to... Mm. Why is it so heavy? Oh, my goodness. Uh, add in the flour, just maybe like half, 
half of the mixture. Yeah, don't put all of it. And then blend that together and then add the rest of it. You don't have to be too precious about well, it. But it's not wafting, wafting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! Wafting. Good <laughs> smells. Good smells, just so we're clear. <laughs> to get everything mixed together. It is a little bit of a sticky dough. I'm going to do a little scrape down. Ooh, can I do it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Lily, hold the lid up for her, please. Okay. Not the lid, the mixer. The, the, the okay. thingy. Yeah. Hold the thingy. Yeah. And grunt. <laughs> Grunting is a very important ingredient. Grunting yes. always helps. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Baba says. You got it? It's sticky. Yeah, it's sticky. Okay. Which is a good sign. Yes. Yeah, it's good. good. It's yes. going to be a very sticky dough. Okay? Don't lick it. Don't lick it. <laughs> so, all right. Yep, down. Turn it back on again. And Just a little bit. Turn it up a little higher. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we're actually going to take this um, and put it in the fridge for about 20 or 30 minutes just because it's going to be easier to do the next step if the dough is a little bit chilled. So we'll see you in 20. One of my favorite Christmas traditions is whenever we drive around and look at all the pretty Christmas lights on the houses. And each year we pick our favorite. We'll give them a prize. We used to give them boxes of chocolates, but then we were like... They're not going to eat those. So instead, we give them an ornament. Okay, so our dough has been chilling for about a half an hour. We have our oven preheated to 375 degrees. And we have a parchment-lined uh, baking sheet right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a teaspoon worth of the dough. And we're going to roll it in a ball. And then we're going to roll that in granulated sugar, get it nice and coated. <laughs> and exactly on the tray. Number two. And obviously you wanna to try to get them all about the same size so that they cook the same. All right, so we will, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna fill up this tray and we'll be right back. So we have our cookie sheet all full of ginger doodle cookies. We're gonna pop them in the oven. The recipe calls for eight to 10 minutes. For our oven, nine minutes gives us just the perfect, nice soft um, inside, but gets the cookie uh, completely baked. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in the oven. One of my favorite Christmas traditions is one we started a few years ago where we give the girls Christmas kickoff boxes, usually on December 1st or maybe on the day after Thanksgiving. And it's filled with their Christmas jammies. This year we all got these. And some coloring books and maybe some fun hot chocolate, maybe a new movie or a new Christmas CD, just some fun things to enjoy over the holiday season. And, and one of the things that we like to give are Christmas games. So here's some of the ones, this one we got last year and this one we got this year. Okay, so our cookies are out of the oven and they've been cooling on the drying rack for two minutes. So now I'm actually gonna move them off of the here. Don't touch the pan again. Yeah, I won't touch the pan again. I already burnt myself once. <laughs> and put them just on this piece, piece of parchment paper to finish cooling and then they will be ready for the decorating phase. So we'll see once all our cookies are baked off and cooled for decorating. Hi, I'm Sean, um, known around in this household as Father, Baba, and Angel's Husband. Uh, a lot of people with CCT know me by that. Um, one of my favorite traditions around Christmas, uh, you know, in our household here, as well as when I was growing up, was uh, watching Christmas movies all Christmas season long. Uh, and two of those major favorites is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, for very obvious reasons. 
as well as A Christmas Story uh, with Ralphie. Okay, so we're back. All of our cookies have been baked and have cooled. What we have here is some melted white chocolate and an array of sprinkles. You can choose, you know, whatever kind you like. We have this Most Christmas. Most of them are gone. Yeah. This is a well-loved uh, Christmas sprinkle set. These are just pinks and greens and whites for fun, and we have some silver ones left over. So what you're going to do is take your cookie, and you're just going to cover one half of the top in the white chocolate. Really, you can do whatever you want, but that's what we like. And then you're going to decorate it with sprinkles. Or you can decide not to use sprinkles, or maybe not even use any white chocolate. Right, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say, is we tend to make, some of them we leave just plain, some we just add the white chocolate, and then some more we add the sprinkles and the decorations to. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's very sparkly. You can do whatever you want. All right, so let's, uh, let's decorate these cookies then. Sprinkles flying everywhere. <laughs> One of my favorite Christmas traditions is whenever I eat all the cookies that we just baked. Usually right after we frost them, because then the icing is nice and gooey and so delicious. I love it. It's my favorite. So our cookies are all done and ready for tasting. Uh, one last uh, special moment that I wanted to share with you is that we're going to eat our cookies and drink our milk on this Christmas dishware that belonged to my grandmother. And, uh, you know, I miss her a lot all the time, but especially at Christmas. Her birthday was actually on Christmas Eve. So it's a really special thing for us to be able to use her plates and her cups at Christmas time. So we just want to wish uh, all of you a happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope to see you uh, soon back uh, doing some live theater. But until then, happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas, and a happy new year. Cookie time. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, rah, 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 rah. So good. <laughs>